Hello everybody, welcome back to Expedition Homestead. In today's episode, we are going to be transplanting our zucchini, squash, and cucumber plants into some larger containers. When you start your seedlings, they're most likely always going to be in these smaller celled uh, seed starting kits. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys the entire process of how we take them from these seed starting kits and then place them into a larger container. I always put them in these Red Solo cups. I'll give you an example of our tomato seedling right here, just like this. There's a couple of really key things that we do during this process that's gonna make sure that your plants are as healthy and as happy as possible so we can get that great harvest when the time comes. So let's hop right into it. I'm gonna show you guys every single step and how we get this done. The very first thing that we've gotta do is mix our soil. I've found that it's easiest to just take a larger Rubbermaid container or a plastic container and mix your soil into this. The mixture that we're using today is a combination of this raised bed soil mixture, which is uh, topsoil and compost mix. And then we're gonna take some of this stuff uh, just a regular old seed starting mix. We're gonna dump that in there so it's about half and half. And next, the really important part. I find it to be the most crucial when growing seedlings and even your transplants out in your garden is mycorrhizal fungi. Uh, we're gonna put about a cup and a half or two cups in here. This calls for one cup every two gallons. So I'm gonna assume we've got about five gallons in here, which would be two cups. The mycorrhizal fungi is a very, very, very crucial key to providing your plants with the base that they need to grow strong and healthy. So just gonna sprinkle that in there. It doesn't have to be exact. Another way you can do this with mycorrhizal fungi is just take it and sprinkle it on your seedlings as you take them to transplant into the Red Solo cups. So we've got everything in here. Now we're just gonna take it and turn it all up, mix it around. The soil that you're making doesn't have to be exactly this. Really, you can grow these seedlings in anything as long as it's kind of a loamy soil. Like you don't want a really dense, um, and, and thick clay type of soil. So if you wanted to just get a plain old potting mix as, and then make sure that you mix in the mycorrhizal fungi and that would be plenty enough to make sure that they're happy and healthy. But since I had this raised bed mixture um, at the house here, we had about three yards of it left over. I'm definitely gonna utilize this and since it's got the compost mixed in, it's gonna work out great. And the reason why I add the seed starting mix is because that's gonna make it a little bit more aerated and light and fluffy compared to just that raised, uh, raised soil mixture. This is the end product. We've got a beautiful mix of everything in there. This is gonna turn out great. So that covers our soil. The next step is going to be the cups. What I do to make this nice and fast is to take a stack of cups that is the same depth of your drill bit. So you're gonna take like a quarter inch or three eighths inch drill bit and stack it up along the cups. And this way I can drill through this entire stack here. You see that? My drill bit is the same depth as all of the lids. So I know the bottoms will also be the same depth. So then I'll take and drill in about five holes in this stack of cups. Obviously, I don't wanna do this over my soil mixture. We're gonna take our garbage container right here. Okay, and here we have the entire stack ready. Now, it's fairly straightforward. We're gonna take out our seedlings, put in some soil, then place the seedling right up on top of that soil. So. The, uh, the base of your soil from the seedling transplant is about half an inch lower than the edge of the cup. And then just throw in 
the remaining soil. Tamp it down a little bit here. And we're almost ready, but there's one more step. That is labeling. Label this whatever variety that you have growing. Um, if, a quick tip for you guys, what I do to label my seed starting trays is what I'll do is I'll take and letter them on the corners. So see, I got an entire tray right here. What I will do is label this bottom right side R3, and then this side over here will be L3. And what I then do is take a grid and basically mirror my tray on a piece of paper. Then I write down what each cell or row has in it. So I've got it on a piece of paper. It's set off to the side and I can keep all of my trays together in one folder without having to deal with any popsicle sticks or any labels on the actual seed starting trays. I found that to be extremely beneficial and easy. So what this is right here, our first three are going to be a black beauty zucchini. I'm sure you guys are curious, everything we have growing here is a uh, black beauty zucchini, gray zucchini, eight ball zucchini. We've got Connecticut field pumpkins, and then we have our straight eight cucumbers and our Wisconsin SMR cucumbers. So that's gonna be the variety of like the squash and cucumbers that we're growing in the garden. Almost everything else is already planted out there and seeded out in the garden, except for we've got like bok choy to do yet. But besides that, uh, everything is growing. We've got all of our tomato seedlings up here growing and uh, the tomato seedlings are doing great. We use the same method on these tomato seedlings and um, we took a two and a half inch seedling from the cell tray and turned it into this incredible plant in a matter of a couple of weeks because we utilize that mycorrhizal fungi that's where we're going to see a huge difference in the growth of our seedlings so now that we have them all potted up what i'll do next is i'll place them into a tray like this that comes with your seed starting kits and this allows me to do something a little bit different than you might expect. Since we place all these seedlings into this tray here, this actually allows me to bottom water all of these seedlings. So instead of spraying water over the entire top, what I'll do is I'll put about half an inch or three quarters of an inch of water in here. And that's gonna allow the water to soak up through the soil and in turn feeding the roots of the plant. I found, that, I found that this method is a lot easier and can also ensure that you're not gonna overwater your plants too much or underwater it. Again, that soil is gonna kind of wick up that water as needed. If you still see a lot of water sitting in the tray about an hour after you have watered, then uh, you might want to take some of that water out. But if it's just a tiny little bit, just leave it. It's gonna soak up through the soil and it'll be fine. But if there's a lot of water left, I'm talking about like half of the water left over, after an hour, then drain that water out of your bottom. And last but not least, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the LED lights that we're gonna be growing these under. Uh, right now, we just got a new light in. It's a Fasita 600 watt full spectrum grow light. This thing is dimmable. So I'm able to give the plants exactly the amount of light that they need. So having a dimming function is definitely really beneficial. As far as grow lights go, guys, just get an LED full spectrum grow lights. About 600 watts like this one is great. And then since it has an adjustable uh, mount right here, you can adjust it up and down. That's also going to be very helpful for you. We're going to be placing this grow light about 12 inches away from our seedlings. Right now I actually have to drop this level down just a little bit so we get enough distance from the grow light. You don't want it too close to where it's burning, but about 12 to 18 inches is perfect. Really, uh, you do want it, these seedlings to get as much light as possible. So a, a decent quality grow light off of Amazon would be fine, or if you have a local grow center that sells them as well. Again, 600 watts is plenty. All right, so here are all of the seedlings potted up and ready to go. Here's the containers. We've got them in. Again, we're going to give them about an inch of water. 
Then they'll be good to go for about a week, five to seven days, then I'll water them again. So just to recap, we've got uh, some pumpkins in here, Connecticut field pumpkin. We've got a couple different varieties of squash and zucchini, and then some straight eight and Wisconsin SMR cucumbers. Up on top, we've got all of our tomato seedlings, which are doing so, so well. In fact, uh, they are begging to be put outside because of just how large they've gotten. So hopefully we can get these outside in the next week or week and a half, almost about halfway through May, and we're gonna be putting them outside. Fingers crossed that we're not gonna have any crazy weather, but I think we'll be okay with them halfway through May to bring them outdoors. So that's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Happy gardening, and we'll see you in the next episode.